Egg Stampin' Sharon. I am bringing you a technique called the floating layer technique. I'll explain to you more about it as we go along. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, you can do so below. After you subscribe, hit that little bell. You'll be notified the next time I upload a video. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. If I can ever help you with any of your Stampin' Up! Supply needs, let me know. Here are my gorgeous cards. I, I mean, does this not scream spring or what? I decided that I wanted to make one of them into a Happy Mother's Day card, and the other one, another thank you card. I need tons of thank you cards. So I send thank you cards to everyone who places an order on my website from me. So I always need lots of those. I'm using the Bouquet Bloom stamp set, which is retiring. I'm using Thoughtful Banners that has a matching punch that I'll be using today and it's also retiring. I mean, I'm tired of saying the word retiring. Thankful Thoughts is another one that's going away. Again, these big bold sentiments ugh, makes me so sad. To make both of these cards, I need two card bases and I used Whisper White and I cut them four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored and folded at five and a half. I need a Whisper White layer that measures four inches by five and a quarter. And then I just need a scrap of uh, Gorgeous Grape. I'm go going to be using some of the stitch framelits and I just wanted two that nested together that fit on my card. You can decide which one you want. I think I used the third and fourth from the top, um, but I love these things. They give you such a finished look to all your cards. All right, so we're gonna bring in our Whisper White layer. And I'm using Gorgeous Grape, Pineapple Punch, and Granny Apple Green. I'm gonna take my largest stamp, my floral stamp, ink it up really well. Don't wanna rock it, you just wanna hold it, let all that ink get off of your cardstock. Because I'll be cutting out the center of this layer, I wanna to try to pull in as much of that purple as I could. So that's why I stamped it the way I did. And then I'm going to stamp, I'm gonna start stamping with some of the flowers. Pull out my pineapple punch. While I have this open, I wanna show you guys something. So when I stamped my original layer, after it dried, Look at the difference in the pineapple punch. I realized that I needed to re-ink up my, my uh, stamp pad. So when you re-ink up a pad, I just wanna give you this tip, because if you watch any of my videos, you know I love to give you tips. Okay, so see how that kind of looks kind of scraggly? I'm gonna fix it. I take a plastic spoon and I press pretty hard and I really am smearing that ink around. I can go back in the center, because that's where we always stamp, and add more ink if I want, but I'm pressing it into the pad. I'm, like, I'm pushing pretty hard so that I don't have too juicy of a stamp when I go to stamp. I live in Southern Arizona right now, and if you've ever heard the old saying, it's a dry heat, dries out my stamp pads. All right, I'm gonna start with my next to the largest flower and I'm just gonna stamp and I'm sure this one's gonna to look totally different, which I'm totally okay with. I've always said that black and yellow are my favorite combos, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking gorgeous grape is my next favorite combo. All right, so now I wanna come in with some purple flowers. Did you notice I'm trying to do things in threes? I have been told over and over again, you need to do things in threes. <laughs> now with the leaves, I couldn't do that. Sorry guys, couldn't follow that rule. Because I'm gonna take the leaves and I'm gonna start filling them in where I want them. 
And since this has a stem at the end, I was trying really hard to just come in from the sides, but I finally had to give up on that and I'll show you why. Because I need some green in the center. Remember, I'm cutting this out. So I decided to try to come off of some flowers and just give me some more green. And then we're gonna come in with some yellow flowers. Add those. You could leave it just like this and not color it, but I'm gonna color it. I think I need, I, think I need a purple, whoops, purple flower right there. This is one of those things that I just kept messing with, like, ooh, I want more color, more color. But you know, this is just, this part right here is just basic stamping. Let's just stamp our layer and see where we go. Now I'm gonna take and cut out the center with the smaller one, okay? So while I was at my machine, I went ahead and cut out my gorgeous scrape layer with the next size frame lit up. And I double checked for you guys, it is the third one from, this is the third one from the top and this is the fourth one from the top or the inside, okay? Um, but it's from the outside in if you're looking at the set of framelits. All right, we're gonna set that aside. And I have always taught you guys to stamp after you attach layers. But this time, I'm gonna attach the layers because um, I need to make sure it's centered before I do my stamping of my sentiment. You will need to use quite a few dimensionals because we don't want this weak part to collapse in. I'm gonna tell you, I saw the term floating frame, floating layers, and I was kind of afraid to even look into it, but you know what? Just because you don't know what something means by the description, if, you, if something is eye appealing to you, go look into it. One of those dimensionals jumped back over and covered up my backing. Okay, so very carefully, I'm centering this on my card base. But it just looks like a little picture frame. So it's just kind of floating because of the dimensionals. It's not a bad term. It's just like I said, I didn't understand it. So I was like, eh, I don't know what that means. But I liked all the cards I've ever seen that's been done that way. So now I'm using the uh, Thank You So Much from Thankful Thoughts. This is a big, bold stamp, so really press it hard so that you get all of it inked. Woohoo! Gorgeous. Yep, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that purple and yellow are my favorite colors right now. Now, I didn't color yet, I just realized that. Let me show you how I colored the original one. I used my Stampin' Blends to do my coloring and I used Highland Heather Dark and Pineapple Punch Light. I am gonna speed up the camera because there is a lot of coloring and I don't want you to be bored. Some have asked me on videos if the Stampin' Blends will smear the uh, water-based ink. It doesn't, it doesn't. When these first came out, we were told to always use uh, Memento ink to stamp with. 
Now that's if you're stamping with black, you need to use memento. But, huh, you can do this with any color. I am using the blunter tip. I found that I had better control um, and it kept me from going outside the lines. I keep missing colors when I go back around. Okay, so obviously you want to color the whole thing first. I get excited on these videos and I get ahead of myself sometimes. So now I'm gonna have to go back and color the piece that I cut out, but it's all good. That card is done. Let's make the second one. Okay, I colored everything while um, you didn't have to watch me because I messed up. So this is just gonna kind of float in the middle. We're gonna go ahead and adhere these layers together. I love the stitched look of these. Do you guys have the framelits yet? The rectangle shaped framelits? I just think they fit cards so well. So on this one, we're gonna add some dimensionals. I suppose you could just add it straight to the card front with snail, but I think this helps give it more of a floaty feeling. I didn't prefer to not use the gorgeous grape. I laid it on there and I was like, eh, I like color. We're gonna add color. This is just gonna line up on the front, whoops. Okay, so technically, this is how it would have been. Ooh, that's even pretty just to lay that on there, but we're not going to. So see how my flowers continue? So that's how it would have looked like before I cut it out. So we're gonna add this. And then I keep strips or scraps of Whisper White. Um, where's that stamp set? This Thoughtful Banners, teeny, teeny, tiny words. I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with teeny, tiny words like that or teeny, tiny stamps. So I'm gonna stamp the banner from the Thoughtful Banners with um, Granny Apple Green. And then I'm stamping Mother's Day first. I tried to stamp happy first, I messed up. So, I call myself the queen of boo-boos. So if I can mess up, you might mess up. So we're gonna stamp Mother's Day first. And then we're gonna stamp happy. Look how tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny. But tiny things need a punch. So just by using a scrap, I'm not gonna waste too much paper. I'm gonna line this up. Now, I need some Mother's Day cards. If you don't need a Mother's Day card, you could put any sentiment on there you want. Pick, pick your favorite, pick what you need. If you need a birthday card, whatever you need, go for it. All right, just because I'm on a dimensional kick, and because it does look pretty flat if I don't put it on with a dimensional. Happy Mother's Day, and thank you so much. Two cards with just minimal supplies. Like I've always said, if you're gonna make one card, make two. This technique allows you to do that like that. Happy stamping, y'all. Mm -hmm.